Number five, count them. One, two, three, four, five. High dynamic range. What is dynamic range? Uh, first, note that the glasses are gone. I'm getting on a roll now, which probably means that I'm going to screw this up. But let's talk about dynamic range. So we talked about the upper end of the range already. Now, the other thing to consider is the lower end of the range. What is the minimum fuel mass that the injector can accurately deliver? And uh, this goes from being unimportant in some applications to hugely important in others. And the reason for that is that uh, today's automobiles are so complex that there are a lot of competition vehicles that are running on the stock ECU. Uh, because, you know, the stock ECU is the only thing that uh, will really get the car to work correctly considering all the systems that are built in. And so the one thing you all know about a stock ECU is that it runs closed loop, which is a good thing. Uh, but that closed loop operation is based on a narrow band oxygen sensor and the mixture cycles back and forth about 5% eh, on either side of stoichiometric. And so the um, uh, low flow performance of the injector is critical uh, because one, it needs to even be able to go to stoich, right? And it also needs to be controllable enough down there that the, uh, the control loop in the ECU uh, can get it to cycle back and forth without uh, overcorrecting or undercorrecting. And so uh, this makes up our dynamic range, the ultimate flow, dynamic flow capability on the top end, divided by our minimum fuel mass, uh, goes a great, great ways towards describing the dynamic range of the injector. We've already discussed what they're capable of on the top end, <clears throat> and on the bottom end, we've gone to great lengths to extend that as far as we possibly can. And uh, I'm not going to go into a great amount of detail here because I think it might bore you, but I'll just say that once the uh, ultimate flow rate of the injector is set uh, during the development phase, we get injectors from the factory that are, uh, let's just call them partially assembled, uh, and we will vary some of the remaining parameters, and I, I can't tell you what those are without getting in a lot of trouble. but. Uh, uh, we'll make a change, we'll test it on the equipment here behind me, we'll make another change, we'll test it again. We go through this whole range almost like, um, you know, adjusting uh, spark timing on your engine or, or valve lash or something like that. And we'll generate a matrix uh, and essentially see what we get as the end result of changing these parameters. And these parameters affect uh, the minimum fuel mass, which is key, uh, the offset. Uh, well, those are the two biggies. There's more there. But the point is that this is something we have control over. Um, maybe not ultimate control, but we can tune it over a pretty broad range. So we work to get everything we can out of the top end, and then we put a great deal of effort into making things work on the bottom end. And we have a pretty good feel for uh, what type of fuel masses are required for different vehicles, and so we get to start with a target uh, rather than just saying this injector flows this much, and the response on the bottom end is what it is. That's not the case at all because, again, we're not modifying a, a streetcar injector. We're not pulling something off the shelf that was designed for some other entirely different application. Uh, we get to design these knowing what is expected of them in the aftermarket, and we get to focus on what's important. And in this case, after we're done focusing on the top end, we're also focusing on the bottom end to give you the broadest dynamic range. So at the end of the day, you get high flow and the ability to control the injector down low. Now, uh, of course, again, I don't want to get myself in trouble. There are limits to that. We can't perform any magic tricks, uh, but we can tune and tweak and get the injector dialed in uh, to make the best of both of those parameters. And the end result is the broadest dynamic range possible. And uh, I think I did that in one cut also. Man, I'm on a roll now. It's got to be all those Red Bulls. I think I'm on to what comes after five. 